Today on the Metal Roofing Channel, we're talking about standing seam metal roofing details that use exposed fasteners. What's up guys, welcome to the Metal Roofing Channel. I'm Thad Barnett. Make sure you subscribe if you're new. We release metal roofing and metal construction content every Monday and Wednesday. Well, we released a standing seam metal roof install series and full video on Adam Mazzella's house where we installed a standing seam metal roof from start to finish. And a couple of those details, namely the vented ridge detail, pipe boot, and curb detail had a handful of exposed fasteners. And we got some comments asking why that is and why those exposed fasteners were used on that roof. So today we're gonna to talk a little bit about that and explain why exposed fasteners are used sometimes in standing seam metal roofing, what details you might see them on, and some alternate options as well. To help me out, I have Dave and Jeff from the Sheffield Metals Technical Department. Thank you guys for being here today. Jeff, I'm gonna start with you. Um, can you tell us why we might see exposed fasteners sometimes on standing seam metal roofing systems? I think I'll start off by saying is that we try to limit the amount of exposed fasteners whenever we're talking about standing seam roofing. You know, ideally, you know, it's considered a concealed fastener system, but you know, some details do require exposed fasteners. Probably the most common detail you'll see with an exposed fastener uh, is going to be a pipe boot penetration. You know, are there ways to do a, a vent pipe without using a rubber pipe boot or without having exposed fasteners? You know, there are. Is it common to see, you know, people doing that without using a pipe boot? Not in my experience. Uh, I think using a pipe boot is probably the most common way to flash a pipe. And therefore, you know, you're going to have those exposed fasteners around the base of the pipe boot. Depending on the your building that you're working with or the design of your building, it's going to really dictate how many details are going to require or could have exposed fasteners in them. You know, things like vented ridges, uh, certain sidewall applications, things like that. Exposed fastener is just going to be the best option, you know, for attachment in those scenarios. So those are the those are the main reasons that you do see them. Uh, again, we try to limit them, limit them in all of our installation details as much as possible. But at the same time, you know, sometimes they are, you know, the best case scenario for uh, for use in the situation that you have. One thing that you do have going for you, at least when it does come to exposed fasteners, is that, you know, most of them can be painted to match the roof color. So hopefully, you know, depending on the slope, uh, the height of your roof, things like that, hopefully it will, you know, kind of get lost in the appearance, you know, based on, you know, the height and slope of your roof. I think another important point here with the exposed fasteners is they're used selectively and, you know, most importantly, um, in a smart way within the building envelope. Um, there's a lot of ways that you can use exposed fasteners incorrectly in a standing seam metal roof installation. Yeah, no, I think that's a great way to put it. You know, again, I think that's a very good term selectively. You know, we use them as little as possible and we try to use either folding techniques or pop rivets when applicable, you know, for attachment and things like that. But I mean, honestly, we just try to keep most of the fasteners hidden as possible. Uh, when it comes to the standing seam roof systems, but no, you're absolutely right. You know, you can definitely, you can definitely get a little crazy when it comes to exposed fasteners, just because they're easy. Uh, when it comes to attaching certain things or getting things to sit a little tighter, you know, maybe some things are a little looser than you want them to be. Well, let's throw a fastener in there. So Dave, let me go over to you. Jeff mentioned pipe boots already. What about like the vented ridge detail that we saw on Adam's roof or the curb detail? Tell me why we see exposed fasteners there. Well, let's start out with the vented ridge. So the vented ridge has um, a basic design where we're, we have a buildup of ventilation material. The fasteners are selected because of the height of that scenario. We've got, we're coming up inch and a half to two inches, and we've got to connect two pieces of metal. And really the only way to do that is with a screw. And we prefer to use a screw with a, a weather head or a washer on it that would impede the water from get infiltrating into the system. There's not a bunch of residual water on a ridge, right? There's not like a bunch of water hanging out on the ridge where those, the EPDM or the rubber or the washer itself is going to be exposed to a long duration of water. There's certain neoprene washer screws that have a built-in cap over the top of it. With they're called Zacks. That's a general term that just encompasses a, uh, a head on the fastener that actually encompasses 
the uh, neoprene washer. And those are a little bit better fastener, but really what you're looking at is it's not exposed to a bunch of water in a dense you know, amount of water. So it's minimized. Uh, pipe boot, similarly, uh, but we can't really call it where those are going to be. Those are, those are predetermined by MEPs, which is mechanical, electrical, and plumbing, where those are located. And then the fasteners at the curbs uh, are generally at a head wall of a, of a curb, and there's not a lot of water that's going to keep running down on those. There's not a lot of runoff from the upper section of roof onto those fasteners. It's, it's a limited amount of water from the front edge uh, or the head wall of the curb down on the curb caps. Um, so there's not a lot of water. There's not a lot of exposure. There's not a lot of um, residual water that's going to be collecting around those fasteners for the uh, water to infiltrate the system. So those selected areas perform very well. I mean, they're not heavily exposed to uh, durations of water. Are those exposed fasteners on the head wall of the curb? Is that to keep it from being lifted from wind? Philosophically, it does a couple different things. So we have the, the front side of the curb and we use curb caps and those get fastened down through. But the flange of the curb on the head wall section is uh, put in with two layers of, of butyl tape and cinched down with, with screws. And with butyl tape, you always need a rate of compression. Um, you're always trying to compress that, that butyl to uh, provide a weather seal. And that comes with fastening to provide compression with that butyl tape. You know, the one thing I wanted to mention about curbs and exposed fasteners is, you know, when I when I first started in the industry, you know, the main curb detail was to put a curb down and stitch screw all the way around it, all four sides. So I think, you know, especially, you know, how the industry has changed and, you know, when it comes to our curb detail, limiting the exposed fasteners to just across the front and then using a, a, a cleated or a hem system along the sides and back, uh, again, you know, going with the whole purpose of trying to greatly minimize the amount of uh, exposed fasteners that are used when it comes to certain details. You know, I think the industry is going that way as well. I think the curb details, one in particular that you can, uh, if, I mean, you can Google it and see the changes, uh, you know, from, from what's being offered now to what was being offered, you know, say 10 years ago. I've heard of a couple different ways um, that you could do a vented ridge or some other types of details maybe without using exposed fasteners. If you guys are doing a WeatherTight warranty project, um, would you consider an alternate option if someone brings it to the table for you, Jeff? Yeah, so I mean, we're, we're always open to new or different ways of doing things. Uh, I think, you know, a couple of things to keep in mind when you're looking at submitting details like that is, you know, obviously one, is it gonna be applicable to the situation that you're doing? You know, the other thing too, uh, too is, you know, we tell people when, submitting, you know, their own details is, you know, if you look at our details, you'll get a kind of an idea of what it is that we're going to be expecting um, or what we expect when it comes to insulation details, you know, fastener spacing called out, um, obviously, you know, proper uses of secondary uh, backups, things like butyl tapes, things like box and panels, things like that. So we ask uh, the contractors to keep that in mind when they're submitting it. If you submit your own detail, you know, it's going to go probably one of three ways. It's, you know, either, you know, obviously one is denied. Um, you know, we're not close enough to where we feel that we could mark it up to where it would be acceptable to us. Uh, you know, two is approved. You know what? This looks great. Let's go ahead and run with it. Or three and probably the most common scenario is, you know, well, we can approve this, but we'd like you to do A, B and C as well. We try to work with contractors, especially in scenarios where, you know, they have a detail that their guys are used to. Um, you know, this is the way all their crews do it. You know, one of the benefits to that for us is that, you know, those contractors are comfortable with that detail. So it makes it a little easier, you know, when getting things right, you know, and having, and having the proper details that we agree to be in, installed correctly on the job. Our details are pretty standard, you know, that we didn't try to recreate the wheel with anything. Uh, you know, it's, it's pretty common in the industry, the details we use. But again, like I said, we're, we're always open if you, you have a different idea. And that you like to submit, you know, we'll definitely check it out and talk to you about it and, you know, see if we can't get it approved to be able to be used. And every scenario is, is slightly different. And so when we look at a detail, we consider a lot of things. We consider ease of install. I mean, if, if you're working on a 1212, the ease of install is super important versus on a 212. So it has to be a good install. It's got to be, you know, weather tight or watertight. 
the economics of it. How is it going to be performed? How's it going to go in? We've established a system where it's, most of the products are very common. It's you know common in our industry to have uh, you know a, a metal and ventilation material and those things you know screw together. So it's not uncommon. It's not out of the ordinary. And these are all things that we've considered. Um, how long is it going to be take to put on? If, if I say, hey, I think this is going to take a whole lot longer to put on than our system. Make sure that makes sense to you. And they kind of backtrack a little bit. They say, oh yeah, you might be right. A lot of times they say I'm wrong. And so we'll, maybe we'll experiment with it. Why don't you go ahead and mock up a sample and take some pictures and send it to me? Let's see how that looks and how that's going to perform. You know, nothing is thrown out the window right away. Let's take a look at it. Let's make sure it makes sense. And uh, we'll go down that path. All right, Dave, Jeff, thank you for the information. Really appreciate it. Hope you learned something. Hope this cleared things up a little bit about exposed fasteners and certain details of standing seam metal roofing. Comment down below if you have any questions. Subscribe here to the Metal Roofing channel. And as always, I'm Thad Barnett. We'll catch you next time.